so hello everyone welcome to another interesting video and as discussed last week in this particular video we are going to look at single blinded double blinded and triple blinded trial and in the last video i have explained you what exactly is blinding and non blinding so if you haven't watched make sure you watch that video first in this particular video we are going to focus on what exactly is bias when it comes to clinical trial and understand what is the distinction between single double and triple blind make sure that you like share and subscribe to this video because it provides us additional motivation to bring you quality content without wasting any further time let's start this video so it is very important to understand bias in clinical trial now when it comes to bias bias is a systematic error that leads to distortion of the true treatment effects and it can give rise at various stages of the trial design such as the trial design trial conduct trial analysis and reporting so bias is nothing but an error where a particular stakeholder or a party would have a negative outcome which can put effect in your final treatment okay so when i say that uh, this particular person is biased against that person it means that there is deviation from reality and this particular deviation or error when it comes to clinical trial it has effects on the trial analysis the treatment and when it comes to the output of the clinical trial so it is very important to eliminate this bias in clinical trial and this particular bias elimination is also one of the key focus when it comes to every clinical trial so everyone tries to decrease this bias because it might have a very significant impact and give you result which does not satisfies the entire design conduct analysis or reporting of the trial so that is why you have to eliminate this bias and reduce reduces as minimum as possible okay but there is obvious question that how does this bias come and if this bias is coming then how can we combat this particular when it comes to clinical trial conduct so let's understand that what types of bias are involved in clinical trial and how do we rectify or how what are the remedies that we can do okay so first is selection bias so when it comes to selection bias as you can see here so it is that when an investigator assigns a patient for example if it is a oral hygiene trial and the uh, investigator has his personal bias and he assigns his friend or relative into the active treatment group and gives placebo to the other uh, participant who he does not have any relations with okay so this is a randomization bias or the selection bias where the investigator is aware of the treatment and due to his bias or his contacts with the uh, relatives or the study participant he is assigning them the active treatment group so in this case the allocation of the treatment would be unbiased and it would be skewed in the favor of that investigator's relative okay so that is the selection bias second type of bias is the study management or performance bias so for example if a study participant has more contact with the study team or if the study team focuses on one particular favorable study participant so they would monitor him very closely and understand what are the intricacies of the treatment whereas for other study participant they might not note the particular uh, nuances when it comes to his treatment and his adverse event reporting this particular thing can have an effect when it comes to capturing adverse event and capturing important data which could have a correlation with the study treatment to rectify that you can what you do is you standardize the procedure so that it is same for everyone you train the personnel to avoid any bias or any contacts with the study participant and give them the same treatment and also as we have seen in the last lecture you perform blinding so that no one knows what exactly treatment is being given and they treat everyone in the same manner third type of bias is detection bias so detection bias is recording the outcome in a way that proves the investigator or the participant belief which means that if a participant believes that i am in the treatment group that he would behave in a certain different manner and the investigator if he knows he would also behave in a certain different manner and that would have a negative impact when it comes to uh, treatment data analysis okay so that is again a different type of detection bias and to rectify that again we have to perform blinding wherever it is feasible 
नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ बायस वी हैव इज द एट्रिशन बायस और पोस्ट रैंडमाइजेशन बायस सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पोस्ट रैंडमाइजेशन बायस दे हैव पार्टिसिपेंट लॉस रिलेटेड आउटकम एग्जाम्पल सीवियर साइड इफेक्ट सो इफ दे नो दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर ड्रग कॉजेज दिस साइड इफेक्ट एंड इफ दे हैव एनी सीवियर साइड इफेक्ट देन वॉट यू डू इज you prefer not to give that drug to the study participants so that you won't have any side effects and that is a clear violation of the trial design so for that you can have intention to treat analysis where the treatment is also given to the subject to in order to avoid the serious side effects or the adverse events final is the reporting or the publication bias now this is one of the serious things because if there is a, any selective reporting of statistically significant result so if you want to eliminate any negative adverse events or any negative health outcomes in your clinical trial so what you do is you under report them or you eliminate entirely and you only present the positive data which can have a significant impact in statistical analysis and which unfortunately if given to the moh and if even they don't they don't find the negative results they can even approve that drug and that drug can come to the market so it is very important for clinical researchers all of us to eliminate all this five types of bias and make sure that we report make sure we have a trial registration publication protocol we behave in the same manner with each and every subject and we minimize the bias as much as possible because at the end of the day wherever the trial design or trial conduct comes it is very important to perform it in a scientific manner so that it doesn't affect the final analysis and reporting of the clinical trial so this is bias in clinical trial now let us understand what exactly is single blinded trials so as the name suggests that when it comes to single blinded only one party is blinded to the study treatment usually the study investigator or sometimes the study participant so when it comes to single blinded trial at least one party okay so at least one party is unaware of what exactly medication is given to the study participant for example if it is a single blinded trial then the investigator is unknown investigator does not know what treatment is uh, been given to the subject so that is a single blinded trial this particular trial is also called as single mask study okay blinding or masking and they provide some control over the double blinding which is impossible and not appropriate at some clinical trial designs okay so you need to understand what single blinded is single blinded is that at least one party in the clinical trial is unaware of the treatment being given again single blinded trials are used where the experimenters or the researcher either must know the full facts of the study okay for example when comparing uh, to the placebo and real surgery or sham and real surgery so that the experimenter themselves cannot have in uh, themselves uh, should be blinded so that the study allocation is fair and the experimenters will not introduce their own personal bias okay so there is a need to blind the trial so as we have seen in uh, bias that single blinding is important because your personal bias should not affect the trial conduct as well as the outcome and finally uh, however that blinding you do it is always a risk to the subject for being influenced okay so that you to eliminate that particular risk or interaction with the subject the researchers are kept blinded to that particular study treatment okay and this particular phenomena is called as experimentals or the researchers bias where the researcher is aware of the study treatment and he can perform bias so, so single blinded study are very effective when it comes to avoiding experimenters bias okay so whenever it comes to your interview or study question you must understand what exactly is single blinded study how it is implemented and what is the main purpose of it to reduce to reduce the experimenters bias so that is about single blinded study next thing is to understand what is double blinded study so whenever in a clinical trial design the two parties are unaware of the study treatment usually the investigators and the trial subject both have don't both of them do not know what exactly treatment is being given okay so clinical trial design in which the neither parties nor the investigators okay neither the subject nor the investigator are receiving 
or do not know whether they are receiving any experimental medication or they are receiving any placebo as we've seen in the last video so that both perform study at an equal level without any bias okay so double blinded study two participants uh, two stakeholders that is the researchers and the study participant are unaware of the study treatment double blinded trials are thought to be uh, very productive when it comes to result because since the expectation of the investigator and the participant do not affect the outcome because both of them do not know what exactly treatment is and this particular study is also called as double masking okay masking and blinding one and the same thing so whenever the study participant as well as the subject do not know what exactly drug is being given they conduct study very fairly and they do not have any influence or bias double blinding uh, trial are used when uh, we have to have an effective control in the trial design when we have to decrease any chances of preconceived notion or any physical cues uh, for example such as placebo effect if you have to avoid that so that it does not dist uh, distort any particular results as well as uh, to avoid any key identifiers where the participant uh, in a particular group okay or the third party they are not revealed they do not reveal to the researcher what kind of study treatment is given because a lot of times when the investigators are blinded but the subject knows what treatment he is getting he has a bias or he can reveal that treatment to the study investigator and then he can develop a bias so in double blinding we reduce the bias entirely from the study subject as well as the investigator and wherever possible double blinding must be used so that you avoid all, all this kind of bias and you ensure that the trial does not have any distorted effects and any negative effects on the final trial outcome now finally understanding what is triple blinded trial okay so a triple tri blinded trial means that the study participant the clinician the data collectors and the outcome adjugators okay so it means that the study subject the investigator and the sponsor all are unaware they do not know what kind of treatment is being given okay now this ensures that the bias for or against the tested treatment is very unlikely to occur because even sponsor can have bias they can have influence which can skew the study result so in triple blinding we remove the bias entirely by having the participant clinicians the data analysis team of the sponsor unaware of the study treatment okay so whatever the data comes through triple blinded study that data is free of any kind of bias this particular triple blinded study so in this the medicine still be labeled as uh, a or b during analysis because the statistical analysis person is also blinded the analysis is blinded to which particular treatment is given and it helps to avoid avoid the analysis bias okay now we first we remove the investigators bias in single blinded study in double blinded study we remove the participant bias in the triple blinded study we are removing the analysis bias okay so i hope you understood the distinction between what exactly bias is what exactly is difference between single double and triple blinded study and how you can distinguish between everything and how you can present whenever you are asked such questions or whenever you are asked such questions in an interview i hope uh, you like this video make sure you like share and subscribe uh, to your friends and clinical researchers and fellow colleagues and thank you for watching this video